memory gives us access to everything that we have encountered. But there is something that we are encountering that our memory does not remember. This someone is not remembered because he doesn't appear. He's always there. He never leaves. So the memory takes the impressions of the senses of what comes and what goes. We remember what we saw and what we heard. We remember our thoughts, our feelings, our speech. But we don't remember the one who is always there. Our memory doesn't have access to him. He is the one that owns this memory. He is above it. She works for him. And so, in order for us to be in contact with this one who is always there, we have to actively remember. It's not something our memory is going to bring to mind. It's something that we're going to have to choose to remember. This is something the imagination will not realize. This is something that only the intelligence can bring to our attention. So when we remember, then we come closer to. The more we remember, the closer we are. Those who gain prophecy were so close that they always remembered. This is the closeness and this is the distance. The closeness is not in space. In space, we are in the exact space where the Creator is. There isn't a cell in our body that's not filling the space of the Creator. It's not in space that we can be distant. It's in remembering or forgetting that we can be distant. We can go into exile, we can completely forget, we can form experiences that are foreign to the one that's experiencing them. And then when we want to be liberated, when we want to leave the exile, we have to remember. If we remember enough, then comes redemption. Redemption from forgetting. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Redemption from living in a disconnected world that doesn't anymore remember what it is and why it is. So when we remember, we liberate. Every time we remember, we liberate another portion of the soul, another spark, another few cells in our body have remembered, have been reattached to the truth that they're supposed to serve. Not to ideas, not to words, not to books, not to people but to the one who made them. That's their duty. The one who made them dwells in them. That's why he made it. 
and we want to learn how to allow him to dwell, to encourage him to dwell, to make his dwelling place accurate to his design, to his will, to his truth. So to remember is to reattach ourselves to something that's always there. It's always there when we're in the body. It's always there if we're outside the body. It's always there because it's the one that makes everything be. The one that makes everything be also includes everything because everything was made from his own light, from his own being, from his own essence. Everything comes out from the same place and therefore everything is the same. It's dressed in a way that it might not recognize itself. Some are dressed in a way that they can never recognize themselves. And yet, what they're made out of is still the same. It's the one that was before everything began. Before there was a beginning, there was already the one who is still now. All the changes in the world are not going to change him because they're happening in him. He's the same one. So when we remember, we liberate that portion of the soul, that spirit, from the exile of forgetfulness, the exile of thinking that anything else is true, that there is more than one. And when we remember, we automatically surrender whatever it is we thought, whatever it is we believed, whatever it is that our opinions led us to, because there's a bigger truth that we have to realize. There's a bigger truth that we're already grounded in. There's a truth that created us. And that truth we have to surrender to. So the more we remember, the more we forget the things that are standing in the way of our soul. The limitations that we've placed on ourselves and they limit our ability to be us. When we are busy in the external world, we make ourselves smaller and smaller. And so when we remember, we remove the limitations that we placed on ourselves because we misunderstood the nature of reality. And so then we return what rightfully belongs to the Creator so that He can have what's His. We got in His way somehow. We had very strong opinions about what he must do or mustn't do, what needs to happen, what can't happen. And we didn't allow the Creator to use his creation as he pleases. We got in his way. So when we remember, we're moving out of his way. We're allowing him to be him. We're allowing life to happen without us creating judgment about what it needs to be. And then the one that's always there has what belongs to him. It's always his. 
we can do with it whatever we think will be beneficial to us. But what we're doing it with, the equipment, the power, the force, this is all his. This is his power. This is his force. He is allowing me to manifest this force in the form that I see fit for as long as I have my body. This is the contract. This is the deal. But it's his force. I don't have force. I have the ability to manifest force. And so this force needs to worship him. When this force worships anything else, then there's a calamity on the way. Because if it's not worshiping him, it's causing some type of damage to him. If it doesn't remember, then it's remembering something else, something that makes the soul small and weak. And so the more we remember, the more he can dwell within us. He will dwell within our body, but we will no longer be a competition for him. We will no longer be in conflict. As long as we haven't surrendered to his will, he can dwell within us because the soul, the way that it thinks, the way that it believes, is in conflict with him and his way. And so how can he dwell there? And if he doesn't dwell, then whoever it is that's dwelling is not really doing as good a job as he should. He's not really running the organs in the way that's best for them because the only one who knows how to run the organs in the way that's best for them is him, the one who created them, the one who designed them. Only his spirit can run them accurately. Every other spirit, and there's some neglect, there's some damage, there's some problem being created somewhere. When we remember him enough, then our entire behavior comes into the context of what does it mean to him. Because that's the only context. What does it mean to us will constantly change. If today we think what we did is amazing, it doesn't mean that tomorrow we're going to believe that, or the day after, or a year after, or ten years after, and so we don't really know, we don't really have a position. Our position is constantly shifting, but if we're doing something and it's going to be meaningful, it has to be meaningful in the context of what does it mean to the one who is always there? To him, it's relevant. What it means to him, that's the meaning that's going to stick. That's the meaning that's going to have consequences. And so what it means to him is, is what does it mean to the design that I'm interacting with? What's it, what does it mean to the human body? What does it mean to the human soul? What is it doing? What are the words I'm saying doing to the spirit that I am? Because that's what's permanent. Whatever I received, whatever I gained in the external world is not really going to stick with me. But what I changed in the internal world, that's going to stay with me for eternity. Not only is it going to stay with me, it's going to form me. It's going to become me. It's going to be involved in who is the future me. And so this unifies the heart and there's enough remembering. There's a unification of the heart because 
there is a stable reality that we're conforming with. All the organs are conforming with the same reality. If we don't remember, then every organ is busy in a different pursuit. There is no unified reality and they're all in conflict. What one wants, the other doesn't appreciate. But when it's in the context of what does it mean to the ultimate truth, what does it mean to the design, all the organs can agree because this is what they were designed for. This is their nature. So then there is a unification of the heart. Then the heart can feel accurate emotions. When there's a conflict between the organs, the heart's emotions are conflicted, which means that she's not fully experiencing emotion, which means she's not fully attached to life. She's not fully experiencing the reality that is being produced by her body. And so this is called returning, tshuva, repentance. It's called receiving forgiveness. We receive forgiveness because instead of punishing ourselves for whatever went wrong, we're remembering that there is a greater reality that we are here to serve. We have no right to punish because then we're diminishing life. We can only serve. And so that's repentance. If, if there's no remembering, then there's no repentance because we don't have where to return to. But when we remember the one, we return to the one, the one that makes everything, not related to our experiences. When we remember, we don't remember an experience. We remember someone that we've never experienced because we've always experienced. We've never noticed that we're experiencing him because he was so steady, because he is so involved in our experience that he's always there and he never leaves. We've never experienced without him. And so he has forgiveness. He holds forgiveness. Whoever remembers him can be forgiven. Whoever forgets him cannot be forgiven. It's to remember yourself before you were born. To use all your development within the body to experience emotion and to experience the appreciation for the truth and apply that to the experience that you should have if you are now as pure and as innocent as before you were born. Because whatever happened after you were born should certainly not be used against you. If anything, you deserve a prize for going through that. And so the situation should not have deteriorated as far as how much you desire to invest in this creature. And so if we remember, we go back to that place. If we can't remember, then we are stuck in wherever narrated we've created through life without seeing the real picture, without knowing what we are serving, who we are doing this for. So let's remember to remember. And constantly again remember because it's so easy to turn against that one, to turn against life, to turn against ourselves, to turn against what's right and what's good. Because 
we remember different things. We remember what we have received from the senses. But we don't remember life itself. We don't remember our own nature. So we have to constantly remember to remember. Because every time we remember, we are closer. If we can always remember, we'll be very close. But even if we just remember once more, we're so much closer than if we didn't remember. Not to cause damage. Don't cause damage to your body. Don't cause damage to your soul. Don't cause damage to the people around you. Don't cause damage to what you believe life is. Don't cause damage to who you believe made life. Don't cause damage. We have to remember. Life is sacred. Life belongs to someone who is very important. We can't understand. We can't appreciate how important he is. We've never seen so important. We've never imagined. But one day we're going to be mature enough to realize that he's very important. We're going to know it within our bones. It's not because he's going to become important then. It's just because we're going to have the vessel that can appreciate the magnitude of the truth. And so also now we should respect the importance, the greatness. We should remember as often as we can that it's his. Everything is his. Each soul that belongs to him, that soul is confused. He has no idea what he's doing here. But he belongs to someone. Someone decided that he should exist and is giving him life. He's part of reality. Respect, to respect reality, to remember. To remember the one who is always there. To remember yourself before you came into the confusion of this world. To remember the innocence that's always there. So what if life managed to confuse you that you're less innocent? It doesn't mean you're less innocent, it just means poor you, you've gotten confused. They managed to convince you. And now there is less you. And so we have to remember to save ourselves. We have to remember to save our souls. We have to remember. Remember the one who is always there. Remember the one that you were before you were born. Have compassion. Don't remember what happened because you don't understand what happened. It's just going to confuse how you're going to feel about yourself. Don't think about what happened. Think about the one that was there before you were born. Still the same one. And what happened shouldn't be used against him. You should be given a prize for surviving all that. Remember the one. Remember the one who was always there.